everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Huck. Today I'm doing a review for Bodica Dreaming the Eagle by Amanda Scott. So Dreaming the Eagle is the first book in the Bodica series, which is historical fiction set in Iron Age Britain around the time of the Roman invasion. Uh, Bodica is a historical figure that I didn't know too much about going into this, so I've done a little bit of googling to learn more about her. But Bodica was a warrior queen among the Iron Age Celts who led her people uh, in uh, rebellion against the Roman invasion, and she has since become a real uh, symbol of you know freedom independence and rebellion so this series is really fleshing out her character and also you know the culture of uh, Iron Age Celts and really focusing on the spiritual aspects of their lives uh, and sort of trying to build out and flesh out uh, what little we do know about their culture and these specific people so in this series, we're following a few different perspectives. We have two main perspectives, but then every once in a while we'll get a couple, we'll get one other perspective here and there. But our two main perspectives, one is Breka, who will eventually become Bodica. In this uh, instance, they're using the term Bodica as more of a title than as the name of the specific character. So in this we are following Breka, who will eventually become the Bodica. Uh, but she is the daughter of uh, the leader of her uh, clan or tribe. Uh, he's also a blacksmith and a warrior. Um, and the beginning of the book starts with their uh, their village being attacked uh, and in that attack when Breka is very young her mother is killed uh, and in order to survive Breka kills one of the attackers uh, and that sort of seals her fate as a warrior because from such a young age she has made her first kill. The other perspective that we are following is her half-brother Ban who she is very close with uh, and Ban also really wants to become a warrior, but he also is very spiritually connected uh, to the like dream world that is very central to the spirituality of their people. So one of the things that is very interesting that I really enjoyed about this book was the religious and spiritual life of it and how much it was really connected to both the land which they live on but also to this like dream world. In this uh, culture everybody has some degree of like prophetic dreams at some point in their lives but there are also people who are specifically called dreamers and so people who are dreamers are held in very high esteem and are uh, spiritual leaders of their community and also they uh, hold the role of being healers. So they're both like spiritual healers and more like physical healers as well. And Ban has a strong affinity with this dream world and dreaming magic that they have uh, and our first introduction to him is him having a prophetic dream. Uh, and so he kind of has this like tension in his character of having this strong connection to dreaming and the dream world, uh, but really wanting to be a warrior of his tribe, not a spiritual leader. So those are the two main perspectives that we're following. Uh, overall, I really enjoyed this book. I really like Amanda Scott's writing. Um, I just found it very easy to get into and immersive, and I just really enjoyed the way that she described the world. I liked a lot of the characters that she created. Um, I think that there are some areas in which I feel like the book could have like been tweaked a little bit and I probably would have liked it better but overall I really enjoyed this. Like one thing is just I think that the book it felt almost like it was two books because about halfway through the story really takes another turn so I kind of am of two minds about this because uh, on the one hand I love a long book where you can like really get immersed in the world and you aren't like the story isn't broken up. You can really just have that continuity and follow such a long story. But also because the first half and the second half felt very different, I just, I don't know, I feel like it might have worked better for me personally if they had been separate books in order to kind of mentally set up 
that expectation of like, yeah, the tone might change a little bit because that happens in a series when you have, you know, from one book to the next, sometimes there's a little bit of like a tone shift between them. I personally liked the first half of the book a lot more than the second half, although the second half was still good. Uh, I, I've seen some reviews where some people thought that the first half was like way too slow and they were like, what's even happening? Like nothing's going on. Are we surprised that that was my first, my favorite part where I was just like, this is incredible. Nothing is happening and I love it. Uh, because in the first half of the book, we're really getting, she's really establishing the world, the culture, and the characters. It's very much focused on just their clan, their village where they are living, um, and and really immersing us in the the nature that they live in, so the world that they are living in and their connection to nature, uh, because the environment is like so important to their culture and spirituality and how it's shaped them as people, uh, but also it's immersing us in the spirituality and the culture of this place. Uh, and we're getting to know these characters as they are growing up, because we start out with them being pretty young. I think Bon is maybe like nine or something when we start out. So they're fairly young and we're getting to watch them grow up. Uh, and I just really loved that. I mean, I loved getting to understand this culture. I like those are all things that I love. I love, you know, getting to know the culture, talking about their connection to the land, learning about their like spirituality and connection to the dream world, just getting to sit with these characters and get to know them. Um, that was delightful to me. The second half kind of expands it because they start traveling beyond their like immediate surroundings. Uh, it also is a point where the stories start to diverge because some of the characters start to uh, go in different directions and so instead of having like one story that we're following from different characters perspectives now we're actually following two separate storylines as they diverge which I just prefer like it's just more fun to me if it's like we're kind of having that small scope of one setting one story but from the perspectives of different characters um also just like bad stuff starts happening in the second half <laughs> and I was just like oh no <laughs> like you know I mean you know that going into this that's going to happen eventually because it is about like the Roman invasion and then you know them leading a rebellion and all of this so it's going to get into war so bad things are going to happen but I was having a great time just hanging with them at their village and then it got into an actual plot and I was like okay I guess we can have a plot <laughs> um I would say also though uh especially in that second half I mean, first half too, but especially in the second half, there are some content warnings that I will put in the description. So definitely check those out if you want uh, to see them because there are some definite content warnings for this. The characters go through some pretty terrible things in this series. There are definitely some characters that I just hate so much. And in some ways I'm like, good job that you created such a de detestable character that I have such strong feelings. I think that in the second half for me also because it got a little bit more into the elements of war, there are more military aspects to it, there were some points where I would kind of zone out a little bit. Sometimes she would kind of focus on some things and give a lot of detail and then there were some areas where I felt like she just kind of moved th through things very quickly uh, that I would have liked to spend more time on. Um, I don't want to get into spoilers but there are certain things like uh, there are certain events that character or experiences that certain characters go through that uh, are very traumatic that I felt like we just kind of moved through them very quickly that I just didn't feel like we got the full like impact on the characters that those moments would have created. Like sir, some of them I think were done well, some of them I felt like we moved too quickly through certain points in the story and then it would have like long repercussions on the character but it just felt like it went past so quickly. Um, I also felt at some times that 
there wasn't enough time spent on the relationships. Like I really enjoyed the characters in this. I really liked a lot of the relationships in it, but I kind of wish that like a little bit more time and a little more like emotion had been spent on these characters, especially the romantic relationships. Uh, Cause I liked a lot of the romantic relationships in this and this actually uh, also has some like queer relationships in it. And I liked, so I liked a lot of the romantic relationships that were a part of the story. I just felt like we didn't get as much like time or emotional investment in them as I would have wanted. Um, and like, again, maybe that's something that will work for some people because it's not very focused on the romances. Like they're there, but they're very much in the background, not the foreground of the story. Um, I just would have liked a little bit more time spent on them so that I could feel like more emotionally engaged with them. But I'm hoping that as the series continues, we'll have a little bit more of that time to like dig into the characters and their relationships and feel more of that connection to them. Because at the moment, I'm planning to read the next book. I'm planning to read the whole series, uh, unless, you know, something goes horribly wrong. But at the moment, I'm, I'm planning to read the whole series. Uh, so I'm hoping that as I go, we'll get to dig into it more. Um, as I've been reading this series or reading this first book, there are actually a lot of things about it that kept making me think that uh, I think that fans of Robin Hobbs books would probably also really like this. One of the main differences though is that I don't think that this digs into relationships as much as Hobbes books. However, again, uh, I've read quite a few books from Hobbes and so there's been a lot of time and a lot of books to build those relationships. So maybe that will come out more um, once I get further into the series with this. But I think that if you like Hobbes and you're looking for a historical fiction to get into, you might like this one. All right, so that is my review for Bodica Dreaming the Eagle. Uh, I gave this book four stars and I'm, as I said, I'm looking forward to reading the rest of the series. I'd love to know if you have read this book, if, what were your thoughts on it, uh, and if you haven't read it, are you thinking of doing so? Uh, but thank you all for watching and until next time, bye!